I got to show you a house this morning. I want to show you a house. It's, it's, I'll show you this. This is in Alameda, California. It was built about 100 years ago. There was a man named Charles Froling. He owned a piece of property. And all of a sudden, Alameda was growing like gangbusters. And they said, Mr. Froling, we're going to build a street right through the middle of your yard. We're going to leave you about 10 feet and about 52 feet long. And, and that'll be your property. Uh, you can do it w whatever you'd like. Oh, Mr. Mr. Froling is ticked off. He says, what am I going to do with 10 feet? So he talked with his neighbor. He says, well, maybe my neighbor will buy my 10 feet of property. And the, the neighbor was very unsympathetic. Uh, he, had, he had a great view of the street. You know, why would he buy this property? It's good. And, the, and the, the, the city didn't care. So this is what Mr. Charles Froling did. Here, show the rest of this. He built his house 10 feet wide, 20 feet high, and 52 feet long. He ticked off his neighbor and blocked every view that he had from out that side, and even made it a little bit over the street there, just to tick off the city a little bit. It's right up against the street. And you're thinking, wow, that's, that's pretty neat, right? No, this is called a spite house. And, and, and I'm thinking, well, that's just a, an anomaly, right? Here's another one. Here, show this next one. 1922, the divorce settlement said that the, the husband, who would be the ex-husband, had to build the exact replica of the house for his wife. Now to be his ex-wife. The, the court settlement did not stipulate where it was supposed to be built. This man went to the edge of of the of the, the in Mass, this is in Massachusetts like to the bay next to a marsh and built this home by a marsh it's got a well that pumps in salt water imagine your baggage towards other people that that is what you do and you're thinking no 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 we would never do this right that is pure spite we don't do spite yeah, we do. Hey, what if we just chose to forgive instead of holding on to the baggage? And I, I know, realize right there I lost a couple of people. They're saying, Matt, um, excuse me, forgiveness is just one step too far. You don't know what they've done to me, how hurt I am inside. Forgiveness is out of the question. I will never forgive them. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why we have the baggage with other people. There's lots of reasons. And some of them are really hurtful reasons. But what if we chose to forgive anyways? What if we chose to forgive? I, I don't promise that everything is going to be instantly fixed. I don't promise that your life will be easy it, it will be fixed it will be perfect that's pretty naive but i do promise this unless you forgive your baggage with this person will never go away you heard that right unless you forgive your baggage with this person will never go away and i make one more promise that god will help you Forgive that person and release the person that has offended you. That our God will help you. See, I'm convinced that the, the, the biggest decision, the biggest choice that we have to make is whether we're going to forgive or not. To forgive or not to forgive. Just to throw Shakespeare in there, right? You know, today, in the future, in every situation, to forgive or not to forgive, that's our biggest choice. Because choosing not to forgive means we're building a spite house that we live in. 
that's filled with all of our anger and hatred and vengeance and bitterness and we live within this house and slowly by slowly it crumbles around us and affects every area of our lives. What if we chose to forgive? See, the only way that I know to get rid of your baggage with other people is to forgive. And I, I realize that's an easy thing for me to say from here because I don't know the baggage that you have with other people. But I, let me go this route. Because Jesus talks about forgiveness a lot. And I'm going to talk about the three rules He gives for forgiveness that, that will help us make that in an application in our lives to help us get rid of this baggage we hold on to people and we just hold on to it so tightly. So I'm going to give you the, the three rules. You can write them down if you want. However, you, you can, if you're watching, you can write them down. Uh, you can watch it uh, later. It'll be on Facebook and YouTube. Well, let me get to the route. Because forgiveness means to, to, to give up your anger and hatred and your bitterness. It means to release that person. And to make your peace. And Jesus gives us three rules on this. Let me, let me help you with the rules. The first one is the golden rule. The, the, you guys know the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So what is this thing that we want to do? It's forgive. So, so we put in there to, to forgive others as we would have them forgive us. See, the golden rule applied here means to forgive selfishly. And instantly you're going, that just doesn't make sense, Matt. You know, Jesus was never about selfishness. And I got to explain, let me explain it to you here. How would you like someone to forgive you? How would you like someone to forgive you? Yeah, I... I I, I try not to talk about stories when I was younger and much dumber, um, but I, I think this one is, is, is more applicable, uh, and it's somewhat embarrassing. I'll, I'll just go through it. Uh, when I was in high school, I had a, a guy in my school that I was driving by his house, and there was this moron chip in my, my brain that just was malfunctioned, and all of a sudden I started acting like a moron. I thought, maybe I'll just drive up on his lawn and just like peel out a little bit. I know that you guys would never do such a thing. Maybe Eric would do that, but no, nobody else would ever do something like that. But I did that. And he lived, you know, three houses from the, the end of the street. So I come whipping out of his, his lawn and I see the stop sign, and, and it's a T, so you have to go one way or the other, and the accelerator stuck. We knew that the accelerator did that once in a while. We forgot, or I forgot, and there's a ditch on the other side of the street, this T. It's a, it's a kind of a deep one, maybe 8 to 10 foot deep. I got to tell you, I I'll date myself here a little bit. I felt like I was like Bo Duke from the Dukes of Hazard. I cleared that ditch and landed on the other side. And then it's like, what have I done? There's this road and people are driving by and they get the tow truck. And oh, I got to tell my parents because I don't have money to pay the tow truck driver. But the worst part... Well, maybe not the worst. That was pretty bad. Um, I had to go to school the next day. And everybody knows. And, and I so drastically wanted everybody just to have amnesia that day that, that nobody would ever remember that that's what Matt did. Didn't happen that way. Because selfishly, I wanted everybody to forgive me quickly and completely and, and to never bring it up again. Didn't really go that way. It lasted a day or so. And then you get over it. But what if we forgave that way? 
That we, we forgave quickly. We, we forgave quickly and completely and we never brought it up again. What if we forgave that way? Because that's the way we want to be forgiven, don't we? That's the way we want to. What if we forgave people the way we want to be forgiven? Uh, some other people use a whole bunch of F words, uh, freely, fully, and finally. That we just quickly forgave and just never brought it up again. You know, forgive selfishly. What if we forgave that way? Jesus talks about the golden rule. Hey, this is how you should forgive. The way you want to be forgiven. And then he also talks about God's rule. God's rule. Because we forgive because we also need forgiveness. You know, jump in if you, if you know this verse. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. <laughs> forgive us our debts as we forgive those debtors in our lives. Yeah. Because we also need forgiveness. The, the person that you need to forgive, oh, they need to be forgiven. They need a lot more than that. But they need to be forgiven. In time, maybe. But we need it too. You know, everybody has scars in life that they, they've been hurt. And everybody causes scars in some other people's lives too. You know, it, as parents, we, we, we talked about this as, as early as possible. We told every one of our kids that we are going to scar you in some way, in some shape or form, unintentionally, of course, but we're going to scar you. We're doing our best. Nobody gave us a, a really complete owner's manual on children, and we're going to scar you. More than just kissing in front of them and they go, ew, we're scarred. Child's rights, you should stop that. No, and beyond that, that we're going to scar them. We're going to do things that they're going to say, oh, why? You, you laid this on us. And, then, and, and for sometimes it's, I'll say this, that when I worked at the, the hospital in the psychiatric unit, the saddest days for me were where some 30-year-old person comes in and they have not forgiven their parents yet. They just held on to all this baggage. And oftentimes they take this baggage and they, oh, what do I do with it? They're my parents. I can't do that against them. And they turn it all inside. And they start self-destructive behaviors. They, they grab on to other addictions to deal with their baggage. They start cutting themselves or whatever. They try to kill themselves. And they haven't dealt with their baggage yet. And it was so sad. They've dealt with this for 30 years. And you're saying, oh, can you get rid of this? You know they scarred you, but you've scarred other people. And, and sometimes it's unintentional, and sometimes it's intentional, but can you forgive because you need to be forgiven too? Make your peace with your parents. You know, they were young and naive, and, and if you're a firstborn child, you're the guinea pig. So you know this already. They, they've scarred you somehow. Because they didn't know what they were doing. But forgive the bully. Because there's always a bully in their lives, isn't there? Forgive that bully who thinks that just because they're, they're bigger or more powerful or, or richer than you that they can do what they want. Forgive, forgive your spouse because they have all these annoying habits and they have baggage that you know so, so well. But we have baggage and we need to be forgiven as well. Forgive because you need forgiveness too. So, so, we, so we get 
the golden rule. We get God's rule. Jesus talks about the grace rule. Let me read a little longer story for this one. It comes from Matthew 18 where Jesus talks about the grace rule of forgiveness. Jesus is talking with his people and he says, if, any, if another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. You've made restoration, which is always the idea. But if you're unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say can be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. And then Peter jumps in. Because Peter's saying, well, he, Peter's like your, uh, your teacher's friend where they always jump to the application right away. Like, oh, all right, what does this mean? Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? I mean, because in the, I'll pause here a second. Because in the Jewish law right there, it was if, if someone sins against you one time, you have to forgive them. If they do it again, you need to forgive them. If that person sins against you three times, you need to forgive them. If they sin against you four times, you don't have to forgive them. That's, you're done with them. You don't have to forgive that. So he says seven times. Oh, that's even more than what we're supposed to. Now, Jesus is obviously going to give me the gold star a plus for the day, Peter, please come to the front of the class because you obviously are nailing it. Jesus says, no, not seven times. Seventy times seven. You're saying 490 times? Those that are math challenged is 490. 490 times? Do you realize how many times that is? Even if you have a sibling that you've had to forgive, rarely do you get up to 490 times. And Jesus is saying, if you're still focusing on the number, you have totally missed the point. It's not about the number. It's not about three times. It's not about seven times. It's not about 490 times. There's no limit to forgiveness. There's no limit. There's no limit to God's forgiveness, and there's no limit to our forgiveness. I'm not saying that there's not boundaries that need to be made. Please don't hear me say that. But there's no limit to God's forgiveness, and there's no limit to our forgiveness. See, we... Here's a thought. Only forgiven people are motivated to forgive. We have been forgiven. We, we, do, we, just, we had communion. We talked about forgiveness. We talked about our sin problem. We talked about our great sin problem. And we talked about our great Savior, Jesus, who forgives our sin. And there's no limit to our forgiveness that we receive from God. There's no limit. All those ones that we did as a kid, all of those, Jesus says, yeah, I got those covered. I am forgiving those. Oh, Jesus, all these ones that I'm going to do in the future, I know that I'm not perfect. All these ones that I'm going to do in the future, I have forgiven all of those sins. All those sins that I'm doing right now that I'm not even focusing on you, Jesus, I have forgiven those. There's no limit to God's forgiveness. He doesn't say, you know, Matt, I need you to clean yourself up first and then I'll forgive you. He says, Matt, you need my help just to clean up. I'm going to forgive you. He says, you are saved not by anything you do, not by anything you say, but because of what I have done for you. 
And there's no limit. There's no distance too far. There's no sin so great that I will not forgive you. You know, God doesn't, doesn't take... He doesn't look at our... Uh, you know, Matt, that was um, the 489th sin that you've done uh, just today. Um, you know, the next one, not forgiven that one because you're up to 490, all right? That's as far as I go. He doesn't keep record. He doesn't forgive only certain sins. There's no limit. Our Jesus forgives all your sins. This grace over all. There's no limit to God's grace-filled forgiveness and there should not be a limit for ours. There were two friends, they were walking, walking in the sand and one of the friends got really angry with the other person He just knocked him on the shoulder and it's like, ow! Out of anger, he slugged him. His friend wrote in the, the sand, Today, my friend hit me. And they kept walking. They, they, they walked up into the, the hills a little bit. And they, the, the guy who got slugged on the shoulder, he gets a little bit too close to the edge. And the, the edge goes away. And he's, he's holding on to the, the edge of the... the the cliff and he's like oh man what, what's, can they help me up there and his friend reaches down and he helps him up and he saves him from dropping all the way down there getting deeply hurt and his friend he grabs a, another piece of stone and he writes on this on, on, on a bigger stone etches on there today my friend saved my life and his friend looks at him and says, man, you, you hit me earlier and you write in the sand and then, and then, then you save me and then you write on the... And, and, I, and then I wrote on the, 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 the stone and he said, why would you do that? And he says this, when someone hurts us, we should write it down in sand so the winds of forgiveness can erase it all away. And then when someone does something good for us, we should engrave it in stone so that the, no wind will ever erase it. The only way to get rid of our baggage is to forgive. I wish there was another way because that is so hard to do. But the only way to get rid of your baggage with others is to forgive. Otherwise we build houses of spite, houses of anger, houses of vengeance, and we live in them and they crumble around us and we wonder, why is this happening and we haven't forgiven? We haven't made our peace. So the choice, maybe the most difficult choice you'll make today maybe in your life here some for some of us is will i forgive to forgive or not to forgive let me pray for us lord jesus we we need your help this morning we have built houses of painful memories and bitterness and hatred in our spite homes are a burden only you can relieve. Help us to forgive. Help us to release those that have sinned against us and have oppressed us. Help us to fully lean on your grace. Give us your peace. Amen.